Right. So. Um, so we covered Asiana flight 214. If we look at Turkish Airlines flight, there's another Boeing crash uh, that happened in Holland, um, just miles from uh, Schiphol Airport, where uh, the uh, aircraft crashed into a field. Um, what happened there was what that was that the uh, radio altimeters were unreliable and that was interfering with the configuration of the plane and uh, in a sense the plane was configured to land while it was still in the in the air and uh, one of the things um, that the um, let's see are you guys seeing this not yet uh, let me switch um, is uh, well, and this is from an avi uh, Belgian aviation website. Is the crash was caused primarily, primarily by the aircraft's automated reaction, which was a tri which was triggered by a faulty radio altimeter. This caused the alter throttle to decrease the engine power to idle during approach. Now they didn't have the radio altimeters, and in a sense, the 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 the, um, the plane was configured to land. And so it, the aircraft was not going to throttle up to protect its airspeed because that's something you do not want uh, when the aircraft is configured to land. Now the pilots did not notice that the aircraft was a landing configuration, even though it, it, it was uh, it would have been visible in uh, the display. But you can imagine that if pilots have a high workload and you're only uh, uh, indication is a small green light in the display that this is easily missed the plane here did not ensure that the uh, it would throttle up um, and protect itself automatically how would this have been uh, salvageable a salvageable flight if it were an airbus that remains to be seen but in any case the configuration options chosen by boeing ensured that uh, the plane would not um, protect its, um, well, itself from a situation that would ultimately leave, uh, lead to a crash. Um, the main uh, thing I want to take uh, away from this is that the auto throttle configuration um, was uh, missed in this situation, although the pilots and the automation weren't on the same page. And this is uh, also present in another um, air, uh, aircraft cra crash that was uh, Scandinavian Airlines flight 751. Again, it was an auto throttle system. The plane had uh, accumulated ice, um, and on, uh, which uh, after two de-icing attempts was not uh, noticed because it was on the rear of the, uh, the trailing edge of the wing. Pieces of ice uh, broke free pieces of ice broke free and uh, got sucked into the engine. Now, uh, to prevent damage, the pilots uh, uh, reduced the throttle um, and continued the, uh, the flight. However, the flight, uh, well, the, the, the aircraft had uh, received some form of update where um, it would automatically advance the throttles if the aircraft was in a certain configuration, but the pilots weren't aware of that a uh, new addition. They had retarded the throttles to protect the engines and although they were in a climb they were still in a safe configuration. However the aircraft decided differently. It registered that the aircraft was in a climb configuration and advanced the throttles and with ice in the engines this caused catastrophic damage to the engines and the um, aircraft eventually crashed into the woods. Luckily no one died in that one. All right so uh, we've covered the uh, flight 296 and 447. It is unclear what would happen uh, if we had reversed uh, philosophies, but it is clear that the design configurations led to confusion about what was happening in the aircraft. There is never going to be an optimal human machine uh, interaction. This is um, always going to become uh, 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 be uh, something that uh, op optimization is something that you have to strive towards but it is never going to be very easy um, all right so we have been talking about commercial airlines where uh, automation is obviously a large part of it and um, 
we also see that we first had an air crew of three, where then we went to two, uh, to two pilots, and there are even uh, at, um, uh, efforts to try to automate the pilot out of the cockpit completely. We see now with drones that we want to have autonomous vehicles that perform under all kinds of um, uh, flights, uh, even through the city, and we are going to rely more and more on automation there. Um, even certain uh, aircraft like jet fighters, um, well, especially aircraft like jet fighters, they have an interesting characteristics. Uh, characteristic where it used to be the case that an aircraft was built uh, to ensure that its flight dynamics were um, uh, kind, that it would be easy to fly a plane. That is now not the case. If we, in the F-35 uh, Joint Strike Fighter is an excellent example of that, it will be impossible to fly without its automation. Um, because it doesn't now have to be inherently stable. Flight, uh, the, the flight control system can um, ensure that it stays stable, uh, stable. You are now able to design all kinds of aircraft that can uh, perform all the uh, uh, maneuvers which uh, are not possible with traditional aircraft and uh, optimize the flight for all kinds of other configurations like, well, I guess, uh, range, endurance and fuel consumption. Aerodynamic design is not a prerequisite for good stability properties. We can fix that with the automation. So this is a, a short history about um, automation in flight, um, uh, predominantly flight control systems. Uh, of course, automation is not limited to these systems. Uh, fuel control, uh, engine control, uh, pressure control are all regulated systems. So we see automation in many uh, different areas. In this video, I've just focused on the uh, autopilot system uh, just to give you an idea of how automation is not just a given, but different philosophies can lead to different forms of a human machine interaction. And I think, yes, that's the end of this presentation. Um, in another video, we will uh, go into a bit more on control theory and more into mathematics. And next week, we'll have another series of lectures like this.